Today I got a unique one, so I thought I'd bring you guys along. This is an electromechanical generator. So a 12 volt motor runs in here, spins, and creates pure sine wave, 120 volts for, you know, for whatever, service trucks, homes, whatever. It's kind of a unique one. Doesn't quite work right. It was just thrown in a bundle of stuff I got in an auction. So I thought I'd bring you guys along and we'll explore it, look on the inside, see how it works, make it work like it should. Um, keep watching. Played around with it a little bit, but it's kind of unique. So you have a, it is a 12 volt system, 12 volt, 120 volt out, 60 hertz, up to 1600 watts. I did download a little bit of a manual. That 1600 watts is running, and it says it easily does 50% over in surge, so 2400 watt surge. Um, one of the unique things I first noticed about it, I thought it was just an electric motor when I just saw it in the pile of stuff I bought. Um, you have 12 volt connection here and a 12 volt connection here. So I'm not sure why there's one on each side, um, whether these are hooked up or not. These ones seem to have some loose nuts so that you could clamp something down. So I'm assuming just this side was working. I don't know. Um, this side did have a cover on it and I wanted to see under there. So I just took off a, the cover really fast and broke a screw, but two of the screws came out. So just wanted to see if it spun over. I believe these are gonna be brushes um, on each side. So I'm thinking that this has two DC motors. Um, the wiring diagram I did look up and it says, you know, even if you just connect a battery here, you connect the same terminals over to here and to here. So I'm assuming there's two 12 volt motors on each side to be able to have the torque to be able to spin up to get the full 1600 watts. So if you only did one side, only 800 watts. I don't know, we're gonna find out. So I guess let's look at the brushes first and see what goes on there. This is gonna give us a great idea of how much use it has on it with the brush condition. Looks like we got a spring. We actually got a coil spring. Those brushes actually look great from here. Pull it out. Oh, that's long. Oh, that brush has a ton of life. Um, I don't know what it looks like new, but that looks pretty dang close to new. That looks fantastic. So we'll put that back in. I mean, that's at least three quarters up the way that the, the hole. That's a huge brush. Might be why they have, is this a system set over here? Yeah, there's a brush in there too. So they might do two DC 12 volt motors just to be able to handle the current that it needs to put out. You might not be able to do it all through just one DC. I don't know. So I looked at the brushes on the back side. All the brushes, so there are four sets of brushes. They all look good. They all look like they're connected. Um, so, I did play around with it and I did get it to work and I'll show you what it does. So when I first hooked this up, I thought it was dead because it does nothing. I mean, you don't get a spark or anything when you hook the battery. Just 12 volt battery, hook directly up to it, nothing. Um, plug something into it, there's a plug right here. Nothing, I was playing around with this. Same thing if I take these terminals and connect them over to there, but then, I don't know why I wasn't using this side, I just figured these were linked together. I hook it up to here. It only puts out power on demand. The other side though, however, does nothing. So I thought maybe it was just hooked up to that single plug. So even if we connect this, so even if we plug that in there, nothing. But then this side, still nothing. So I think that this motor should spin independently and this motor should. I don't know why not. So let's go inside and see what's going on. So let's take out this cover and look. Well, there's one issue as I can see that this is completely disconnected. So this plug is not connected to anything at all. Why that's disconnected, I have no idea. And we have this wire disconnected. Ah, so this is our, this black wire that comes out is our hot. 
This is our neutral. Um, our grounds is connected to the body, so we've got our neutral. We got our hot going through the little breaker. It looks like it says it's a 15 amp breaker. But this black wire, well, let's see. Does this have a ring terminal on it? It does. So this black wire is supposed to probably be jumpered onto that ring terminal. Let's see what's under here. What do we have? We have our white wire, which I would assume probably connects down to this spade. And then if our black wire should have a ring terminal on it. Yep. So we have a ring terminal. This should connect over on this side. This ground terminal, there's actually a spot over here. Spin you guys around. There's actually a spade right here that grounds to the case. So everything is duplicated for some reason. Um, so this side is independent of this side, but you can connect them together. And because it's a fixed rotor in the center, their sine waves will be identical, so it doesn't really even matter. And so I, so I don't know if this is a, so this must be 120 volts out for one field, for this whole field, and this side puts out 120 volts, and each one does 800, and combined they do 1600. Um, why they have this side disconnected makes me think that this side's shorted out. Um, so I want to test, since I know this side works, I want to test this side independently. So I'm going to connect it up just with this side. Um, the negative and the negative 12 volt terminals are just grounded to the body. Um, already tested those. So the 12 volt though, this 12 volt comes up to this side of the, the relay and the relay sends it out down here. And actually this is just loose. I wonder if that's just a bad connection. Now, this is tight, this is tight. This is not tight. I wonder if this side wasn't working because it was loose. Or I wonder if somebody bought this and they decided that, you know, you plug it into the battery, it doesn't work. So they were trying to diagnose some stuff and couldn't get anything to work um, without knowing you had to plug something in to get power out. So I'm going to do just the opposite and try hooking up just this side with the wiring and see if it works. So I took the black power wire from this side, which I assume it is, and I hooked it up to the little circuit breaker and then I just that just feeds over to the same outlet over here. This outlet still isn't hooked up. The, there's no, they're identical. There's no reason not to. But I guess, you know, without this hooked up, the way that this triggers, so it uses this little um, JE305 transistor to trigger just 12 volts going to these these are, I mean, these are the same thing as an automotive, like, starter relay, like on the sidewall of an old Ford truck. So, 12 volt goes to here, and it just puts power between these two. So, it's sensing through the power wire, and then um, the load across there, so any resistive load from this contact to this contact feeds back to here. And then this says, hey, there's resistance between there. Let's trigger the relays to turn on and then it starts the motor. Could be, I mean, that's super simplified. So now let's connect 12 volts over here. Let's take our cord and let's see if we fixed it. No, nothing. So this side might be shorted out. We've got 12 volts to here directly from the battery. So this should energize that brush. So if I touch 12 volts to here to here, I should be able to jumper that and jumper the solenoid. Nothing, but somehow. I wonder if we just have a dirty connection 
right here. I'm going to loosen this wire and reconnect it because it works on this side. And this wire over here triggers this one, but this wire over here doesn't trigger this one. But they're connected together on that terminal. So let me clean that connection. Really quick, if you don't know what a relay does, all it does is make a, it's just a huge light switch. So a little bit of power gets delivered here and it just connects two terminals. So all it's doing is connecting these two terminals. That's it. Um, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, I'm actually gonna see if I can come over cause this is connected through there. If I come over here and give it 12 volts, Yeah, but then load from this side doesn't trigger it. Uh, it's not shorted out. So we know that the 12 volt motor on this side works and it puts out 120 volts. Um, through this wire that was disconnected. So there's no short there. So if I connect this one up, we know that that triggers it. So this one could be triggering. This orange one could be the trigger. I don't know. Something's triggering it and this side seems to work. So if I connect this up to there and they are because these will touch together then either plug should now excite it and energize it because maybe i'm missing something uh i'm sure i am but it works why this side was disconnected i don't know maybe they only needed the one plug slip the other side unplugged because this seems like it works just fine uh, maybe they dove in there the exact same thing i'm doing where they just like i said they just plugged in a battery and it does nothing so you think that it's not working. Um, it could be that this was just stuck because I thought maybe this was stuck when I first tried it out. So I took off the cover and spun it. So it could have just been on a dirty spot on the brushes that had been sitting for a long time. It hadn't spun. So I actually took off the side cover and gave it some spins because I couldn't get it to work at first, but I was also only using that one disconnected plug. Maybe. Um, well, let's put it back together, put it all together, and then see if it functions and see if we can put out 1600 watts, I guess. Okay, I didn't even really pay attention to this little cover. There was right here. There's not one on this side. So I took it off, and sure enough, there's brushes for the AC side. And so those brushes actually look really good. And you can see down in there, everything down in there looks really good. I actually looked, there's another one of these on the bottom. So there's a set of brushes on the bottom. So that's the other. So it's sharing power between these two, taking them out. So this is usually you put a pin in like this, pull it out, the brushes spring out. But it being down in a hole is kind of strange. So I got a piece of string tied around it. The string is not strong enough by itself. But if we were able to loop it around the top like this and hold it, so I'm holding both of them, hold both ends of the string. Get it back down in there. And we'll give it some spring, let it up just a little bit. There we go. Whether or not that's a technical way to do it, who knows? But it worked. That's all that matters. Okay, I've got both sides wired together, like it says in the manual. It says either to hook a deep cycle battery to this side and one to this side. Um, or just to daisy chain them together so the positive a positive cable comes over here a negative cable comes over here um, just to have battery cables locked down so uh, I have a deep cycle battery here a voltage meter with an amp draw on the bottom let's just start plugging some stuff in looks like I have you know a 90 watt light bulb shouldn't matter which side now these are daisy chained together So 90 watts draws 30 watts. So I don't know the efficiency of that. Let's just make sure. Let's plug this in. A kilo, this is just a kilowatt meter. 
it'll just say exactly what I'm drawing. And it says that I am running at a little fast, 64 hertz. And I'm drawing 99 watts, 100 watts, 102 watts at 130 volts. So the voltage is a little high right now, but this is a really low draw. Apparently the meter keeps it running. That's fine. We unplug it. Yep. Okay, so the meter keeps it. It's just enough power to keep it running. This draws 1,250 watts on high. So, somehow it says, okay, so even though this doesn't draw very much, while this is running, it's pulling 20 amps, which is quite a bit, just to stay kind of idle. Ooh, it doesn't like this. We're drawing 106 amps. And the voltage just dropped off. This is essentially just like a straight short circuit. Um, let's try like an electric motor or something. A big old electric motor. Let's see if it'll kick on a motor like this. Our voltage just dropped off. I don't know if I'm... I think I'm losing too much voltage to these cables. So I've been playing around with this for a while. I think I got it all figured out. Everything seems to be working good. Um, the biggest problem I was having is not having enough juice. Get to it. I had some medium duty jumper cables here, but they just weren't supplying enough. So I doubled it up with some real jumper cables with real gauge wire with aught or double aught. I don't even know. Um, now everything is, the juice is flowing to it. Uh, I was able to use this uh, hammer drill and I got it to pull almost at peak 17 amps. That's what this pulls while you're drilling a hole. I was drilling a hole just down in my shop floor. Um, but it able it handles it pretty effortlessly. So this thing, I don't even know what it uses while it's running, but So this uses four amps or um, 500 watts just running. Uh, here's a little jigsaw that uses like 200. The only weird thing is my kilowatt meter here um, actually kind of plays around with it and likes to keep it running, which is fine, but let's see if we can Kilowatt meter, I think, is messing stuff up. It doesn't seem to... Oh, I don't even have that plugged in. Oh, this was plugged in. So with a 500 watt load and with both or even with both of them going 700 watts it has no trouble maintaining roughly 60 hertz and 120 ish volts which is about the same you would get with any you know gas generator um it hates the heat guns um then the straight restrict uh, resistive load for some reason it hates those so now let me see if i can get enough random plug-in tools where we can get I think this is 200 watts so this is 500 700 this is 900 um, without any load so that's 900 watts let's see if we can get let me find something else to plug in and get even more that electric motor right there I did a test on that and that pulls 38 amps on startup yeah that's quite a bit okay I even had to take my amp load meter off of that because I can't it, I was exceeding 100 amps and so that thing's only rated for 100 amps. So I do have this amp clamp right here. They'll show how many amps is draw. We have a power strip. I have a 500 watt halogen. This is a little over 500. So 500, 500, 200, 200. So 1400, which we, we should be right at the max. So let's try plugging in just the halogen. Um, It 
So we got 509 amps. Let's do a live. So 4.13 is just that. I was just going to do a peek to see what we got. Actually seems to be working good. We dropped down to about 90 volts, and that's because I guarantee that that one lead acid battery isn't supplying enough to do that full 1600 watts. And I think that's the limitation is having even the book says to run two batteries. So you need two batteries to run this thing. It's kind of neat because it's just power on demand. Whenever you need it, you just kind of Flip the switch or go, you know, a power tool and it would just shut off. It probably, I think these things, these things are expensive. They're like four grand, which is ridiculous for what it is. That's why you don't ever see them. Um, they're a, a, technically, I think they're called dynometers, d dynometers, dyno, oh, well, not. Go up here. What do you want to see? You want to see up here? What is it? What is it? Huh? Oh, let me too. You want to see what I'm talking to everybody about? It's this stupid red thing. Is that embarrassing? What did I do to you? Go ahead, get up. Run around. They wrap you up in, in paper bubble wrap? Are you wrapped in paper, bu paper bubble wrap? No way! Is that a butthole thing of me to do? Hmm? Oh, you don't care. Here. <laughs> Doesn't even phase you.